Dr. Shawan Gillette, and you're at Dayton Trichology. And today I'm going to be dealing with a patient that's thinning from female pattern thinning. Just to educate you a little bit on female pattern thinning, what happens is, is that this is actually the papilla. The papilla is a station that's responsible for making the hair grow. It's a station that forms hair, tells the hair whether it's going to be dark, light, whether it's going to be thick, whether it's going to be thin. So a lot of times, the actual bloodstream passes the papilla, and it gives it the nutrients and the minerals that it needs to have. There's times where there is a, a hormone called testosterone that actually uh, converts over to dehydrotestosterone, and it actually cuts this whole entire hair follicle. When it cuts this hair follicle, it causes the hair to miniaturize. For women, we actually miniaturize more so on the top in the crown, and this is a good explanation of how the hair goes from really thick hair to really, really fine hair. In most cases, if the woman is thinning, she doesn't generally go bald, but she'll go really, really thin. So I'm going to have you look at me do a consultation with one of my patients, and then we're going to actually do a treatment today. Today I'm dealing with my patient, Amy. Amy is dealing with female pattern thinning and a little bit of diffuse thinning. One of the things that I look at in female pattern thinning is I look at the female pattern thinning scale. This scale helps me determine where a patient is at on the thinning scale. So they can go from a level one all the way up to a level eight, depending on how long their hair has been thinning. The next thing I do in my consultations, I like to look at blood work because sometimes a patient will be de dealing with female pattern thinning, but also they're dealing with the fact that they may have some diffuse thinning. So those are the two main things I look at. One of the things about female pattern thinning is that this area right here, which is called the papilla, its primary responsibility is to build and to grow hair. But there's times where this area is constricted with a hormone called DHT, dehydrotestosterone. And in that instance, dehydrotestosterone actually cuts that hair follicle and it doesn't allow it to get any nutrients or any minerals um, from the blood. So what our goal is, is to actually slow that process down, to slow that DHT process down. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to actually look at Amy's scalp, and I'm going to use what's called a dermoscope to look at her scalp to see where she's at in the thinning process. So what I do is I actually look at her hair on the, on the scope. The scope is going to tell me where she's at on the, in the miniaturization process. And so I'll get a couple shots to actually show me the percentage of hair follicles she has is thin. The next thing I will do with Amy is I will actually look at blood tests to find out if she's deficient in other minerals um, in the body that may be causing her hair to be thin in different areas. So as I look at Amy's thinning, it tells me a couple things that she's been having thinning for a while. It also tells me that um, this pattern is more of a strong female pattern thinning. If you look at the top, that's a strong pattern for female pattern thinning. So what I'll do now is I'll get together a treatment plan for Amy. I'll look at her blood tests, I'll look at her family history, I'll look at her diet, and determine what's the best treatment plan for her. What I'm actually getting ready to do now is I'm going to go ahead and start the first process of her treatment today. This process is going to be what I call a scalp exfoliation. I'm going to use an all-natural clay mask to remove all the impurities that she may have from her scalp to give us a good foundation for treatment. So what I'll do is I'll actually start by taking the treatment and putting it directly on the affected areas. This treatment right here removes all the impurities from the scalp so that it'll be easily to receive the next part of the, the treatment. A lot of times people will have buildups on their scalp from products, from medications, shampoos, oil sheens, scalp grease, oils that they put on their scalp. And this is going to help all the impurities to be removed. 
And once again, the process is just that I'm going to actually apply it only on her scalp. I'm going to let it to, let it allow it to sit on. And this is just for the affected area only. And so she's dealing with more of a female pattern than he. So her affected area is going to be more so in the crown. So I'm going to go from the perimeter throughout the crown all the way up to the occipital bone with applying the treatment. This treatment will now sit on for about 10 minutes. And this is the beginning phase of what we call a scalp exfoliation. So now that I've applied the actual mask to remove all the impurities, the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse the mask and I'm going to prepare her for what's called the oxygen scalp treatment. Um, one of the things about this treatment, this treatment is good for all hair types. It is really conducive to uh, women that are thinning in early stages or even in the later stages. It's a really good scalp exfoliation. One of my main goals is to get the affected areas of the scalp. So what I've done is I've actually rinsed the mask out of her hair, out of the affected areas, and her scalp feels really nice and really clean. That's the basis for starting any treatment in our centers that we do a really good exfoliation. And what we use once again is an all-natural mask that helps remove any impurities that you may have in the scalp. Now actually, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the actual treatment of oxygen therapy. Oxygen therapy does a number of things for a person that's thinning. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to help me to infuse a lot of elixirs right into her hair follicle. So the first part of my oxygen therapy is just to apply oxygen to the scalp. The oxygen is actually opening up the hair follicles. So I'm just applying a layer of oxygen right to the scalp, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to apply the actual treatment. And so when I apply this treatment, once again, I'm applying it only to the affected areas of the scalp. This is infusing elixirs right to the papilla, right to the derma papilla. So we want to make sure that the papilla is getting all the minerals and nutrients that it needs. And this procedure is actually helping me to give her all the mineral and nutrients that she needs to grow her hair. So once again, I start off with just giving oxygen, and then I come back with the actual treatment. This procedure is normally done on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. The more you do it, the better it is for the hair. The more oxygen the hair gets, and the more minerals and nutrients the hair get, you're able to grow really strong, healthy hair. And once again, I apply this treatment only to the area of the scalp that's affected. This is the basis for a lot of my treatments.
Everyone is different, so what type of topical I apply for one patient, I may apply a different one for another patient. The next step that I'm going to do, I've actually finished the whole oxygen therapy step. I want to make sure that she actually has really, really strong hair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply another mask. And this mask will be applied from the root of the hair shaft all the way out to the ends. This is going to allow me to give her strength. And so I'll apply it starting around the hairline first. And then I'm going to actually go from the roots to the hair ends, applying a treatment. And once again, I only treat the affected area when I'm treating hair. And once again, I'm going to take this mask and I'm going to take it from the scalp all the way out to the ends. It's going to be really important that this treatment is a treatment that she continues to get. After one treatment, you notice a tremendous difference. So now that I have the treatment applied to the scalp, our next step is going to do another form of therapy, and that will be steam therapy. I'm actually going to go ahead and put her up under steam therapy. Steam therapy is going to allow her treatment to keep her cuticles open for another 20 minutes so that she can get the maximum amount of penetration that she needs. For this type of treatment, um, this is the last phase, uh, one of the things I usually like to do is do what's called a high frequency rake. This is going to increase blood circulation. This is going to take that blood and feed the papilla, so give it some excitement. Uh, the, photo, the, the process is called photobiostimulation. It increases energy and gives energy to the hair follicle. So this is the last phase. I'm going to work on the affected area. So today, you've seen me do a consultation on one of my patients that's experiencing female pattern dentists. Um, Miss Amy is probably on a scale, she's probably at about a seven. Her hair is really, really thin. What that tells me is two things, is that one, she has really high androgen levels, and two, she's been thinning for quite some time now. Um, we have several different therapies in store for her that are going to help her to regain her hair. One of the things with doing therapies with female pattern thinning is that your goal is to increase the actual thickness of the hairs that are there because she isn't essentially bald. She has hairs that are there, but her hairs are really, really, really thin. So we want to increase the blood circulation to get her hairs back to the thicker state. Once you're at a level of a seven or eight, it takes a, a longer period of time to actually get that hair back to that state. But one of the things about hair loss is that you want to actually start as soon as possible it's never too late unless you don't have any hair follicles present. But with Amy, she does have hair follicles. Her hair is extremely thin, and we're going to actually dive in and try to do as much as we can with slowing down that process of thinning that she's experiencing. So stay tuned for more results on Amy and her hair loss as we go through this journey of helping her uh, recover her hair and also to be 